point of view was one massive round the country charging in cars and, 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 and motorway service stations and all the rest of it and Norwich was just one of the many places but my biggest memory of, of Norwich is actually not in the stadiums I was there and it was very exciting and all the rest of it my biggest memory is when we came to do a presentation to try and see if there was interest locally to invite Billy because we had to get that first we had to get local people to actually want him to come and we had this presentation and there were people there and afterwards the group of us presenting this with one key person from the Billy Graham team with us went to a little room where we were going to have lunch in the hotel and while we were waiting for lunch the waitress came in and she just said can I say something and we said yes she said I hope you'll get Billy Graham to come here because a few years ago he led me to God and I often think that waitress is the reason we came to Norwich. role during Mission England was to be regional coordinator. I started uh, ooh, a good year before Billy Graham came and it involved going around all the different uh, regions, all the different uh, parts of our uh, East Anglia North region and talking to people, seeing if churches could get involved and, and so on and so forth. And uh, for me, although it was a slow start, gradually people got the, the vision and uh, so many churches, all sorts of different denomination, denominations and, and uh, so they all were working together and that was very exciting. Uh, we were one big Christian family by the time Billy arrived and that move had certainly continued uh, after the mission and it's 25 years on it, it's still happening. Hello, I'm Dan Waite. Um, 25 years ago when Billy Graham came here uh, we just started going to church. We'd sent our kids, Alice and Sally, uh, they were about uh, 13 and 15 at the time, to church and they'd actually brought us to Christ and they were there, part of the team, praying for us in the triplets which they had at Billy Graham time. And uh, we then came with a busload from St Andrews and Gulston. And uh, the great joy of being there and feeling this, seeing the grace of God working in so many people's lives. And that was then. And then I continued my Christian walk, uh, serving in a lay capacity. But about ten years ago, I felt called fairly significantly to uh, serve as a priest and went through the selection process. I'm now an ordained local minister serving at St Andrews. I'm blossoming in where I planted, if you like. <laughs> Championship and Divisions 1 and 2, at least two thirds of those teams have chaplains. There is a need that is recognised by the FA for pastoral uh, support. They see it as pastoral support, we see it as pastoral and spiritual. And it's a real privilege to, uh, to be there and have that opportunity. And it takes really what we do today, the 
Brotherhood of Chaplains back to the roots of football in Victorian England where it was young um, clergymen who started so many of the teams that are now the big teams of the land. Church teams have um, developed into at least 12 of the teams that have graced the Premiership. Choir teams, Sunday school teams, as they've gone on. Birmingham City was a choir team. Bolton Wanderers was a Sunday school team, but they've moved on a long way. But we are the next generation, and we have a privilege of being involved in the... Oh, yeah.